C'est encore moi. C'est encore moi. Salut. Salut. Comment tu vas? This is Elena Yerlova. In Israel, she is a famous actress, known for numerous films and television series. I was in a minibus, and I went to the house. I went to the house, and I didn't know what happened, I just told you. The new one with Yaakov Eilon. שלום לכם ערב טוב, אנחנו נתחיל בתאונת הדרכים הקטלנית, שני הרוגים, שחקני תיאטרון, פצועה קשה וילד שנותר בלי אימא ואבא. אלה כמה מתוצאות ההתנגשות המיותרת הזו אמש בצומת ישי. יורם וחברו מחמוד חסן נהרגים במקום. הלנה ירלובה, אחת השחקניות המוערכות ביותר בישראל, נפצעת באורח קשה. I'm an early morning bird and I turn on the news at 6 o'clock in the morning hearing that Uh, a group of uh, the theater was driving after a performance in the north and that a severe car accident happened and uh, one of the actresses uh, is very severely injured. It was not obvious that she will survive. מנהל הבמה היה בתוך האמבולנס שבו פינו את הלנה ירלובה והוא דיווח לי כל הזמן מה המצב. כשהמכונית השנייה התנגשה בנו ושניים שהיו בתוך המכונית הם מתו, ואני הייתי הפצועה בעצם הכי קשה. The time passed and uh, after the acute phase in intensive care and so on, she came to our department. After being so severely injured, the rehabilitation process was expected to take a very long while. It was both fractures as well as internal organ, Uh, injuries, meaning abdominal surgeries and recurrent surgeries. She couldn't walk for a long while. <laughs> a terrible accident. There is only a slim chance that Elena Yerolova would ever walk again. Or needless to say, act. And now, two months later, it's almost like a miracle has taken place. A wonder with the assistance of the newest techniques from the world of video gaming, now used for serious purposes. At Sheba Hospital in Tel Aviv, a spectacular development is taking place. A revolution in the field of rehabilitation, where gaming paradigms and medical techniques together create an amazing result. Jim? Okay. 45 miles, the back, the back, the back, the back. The patient stands on force plates. These plates measure the force that the patient exerts on the ground. This is being relayed to a computer. With the help of sensors, special cameras register the motions of the patient. A total image of muscle forces is created. The beeping sound comes from the side where Elena uses more muscle force. The red muscles on the screen are not active. The green ones are. Like this, both Elena and the therapist see immediately which muscles need to be worked on. For the first time in history, muscle forces are visible in real time. Okay. This is totally new. We never had anything like that. If I would tell you, use more your gluteus muscle or use your uh, rectus femoris muscle, would you know what I'm expecting you to do? Not at all. If I will tell you, bend your hip or knee, you might be able to do that. But you will use the muscles that you feel comfortable to use. However, if one of them was damaged for any reason, I'm afraid it will be very difficult for me to tell, use this certain particular muscle. While 
I put them on the platform, they can watch themselves and they get a, a feedback of which muscles are functioning, leave the names, that's not important for the patients. But they can also see an immediate feedback of the extent of the activity of the muscle. Elena sees a muscle that she is not using. The middle muscle on her left upper leg stays red. She is not exerting any force with it. Slowly, she is trying to practice applying force on this muscle. Left is right and right is left, you are free. The sky is the limit. Had you asked me five years ago, I'm not sure that I could predict where we shall stand now. We had an idea, we implemented it. While implementing, we learned so many new things that we didn't expect. The collaboration of the two worlds, of the technology together with medicine, is very strong now. The system is not used only for diagnostics. Here, Elena is immersed in a game. She needs to hit specific balls with her hands and avoid others. An extremely efficient exercise for balance and practicing coordination in a dynamic environment. A medical treatment from the world of video games. It's important to see how many balls she hit with the right arm, how many she hit with the left arm, and what type of balls they were, because they have different motions. So it could either reflect that someone is dominant on one side rather than the other, uh, which would be the regular case, but in case of an injured person, uh, you can see the difference that might be due to pain or to disability or whatever, and you can encourage him or her to do something and to follow up the improvement between session to session, to score it and to measure it. 249 points. It's, it's very high, but I'm not as much concerned about the absolute score. I'm more concerned of the process of improving. If she started with very low, I don't care. But if I see progression from session to session, then I see that she's doing the right thing. Elena plays serious games, where, for example, she needs to steer a boat using her hips. The platform she stands on mimics the waves in the virtual sea, and an operator can determine their height, frequency, and direction. <laughs> הייתי הכי גרועה, אמרו לי שאני קטסטרופלית. ונורא נהניתי בשייט, כי אחרי שאתה סגור בבית חולים כמו בבית כלא, לקבל פתאום את החופש והרגשה של הים, זה עושה משהו כל כך טוב, וכל כך רציתי לעבור את זה ולקבל את זה שוב, וידעתי שאני עובדת, והרגשתי שאני עובדת, וראיתי מה עובד, וזה... ברגע שאני מבינה מה אני עושה, אז אני עושה את זה יותר טוב. אני חייבת להבין ולראות, אחרת... אז זה, זה בשבילי. המציאו את זה בשבילי, אני חושבת. But this story goes even further than just a revolutionary way of rehabilitation in diagnostics. Neurologist Gabby Zelig of the same hospital absolutely believes that receiving true multisensory feedback like this in real time can help the brain to regain motor functions that looked like they were lost. Ready? Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, so this is the question. Okay. Dit noemt men in de medische wetenschap de plasticiteit van de hersenen. Okay, so today. Most of the rehab methods of treatment are based on what we call plasticity of the central nervous system, brain and uh, spinal cord as well. And today all the rehabilitation is training the central system to regain some of the functions that were lost after the injury or the disease. Plasticity is a phenomena that is trying on one side to 
influence some parts of the brain to take over activity that were lost by the so-called death cells of the brain. So I'm talking about of transferring activities from the lost or the death side of the brain to the cells that are still in life. And in the last, I will say, 10 years, we already saw that combining virtual reality with physical therapy, cognitive therapy, the results are much, much better. We don't know exactly why. Probably because this is a way to give to the patient more, um, I don't know. <laughs> more what? More confidence. Uh, more co confidence, yes. I, I, I want you, but it's not confidence. Feedback. It's uh, uh, yeah, feedback and also, yeah, maybe confidence. Okay. Smaller. Immersive virtual reality and real-time multi-sensory feedback seem to assist in the regaining of lost motor functions. It is possible to apply the same techniques to enhance the performance of healthy people and top athletes. We have experience with uh, basketball players, with runners, with surfers and so on, um, even ballet dancer teachers. Not only that they realized how they can improve things um, uh, for the sake of their students, but one of the very experienced teachers learned that doing a pirouette many years, when she came here, she got to understand something that she improved in the techniques after more than 30 years of dancing. So the immediate feedback is very important. Elena is getting better. She recently started acting in a new television series. Sidra Britit, and in time, in time, I'm sitting. I don't know when I'll be there.